Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, October 23rd, 2024 edition of the Sandinet Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Quick diary today about HTTP versus HTTPS traffic and how much HTTP you actually still have left on your network. Turns out in my own network, it's barely anything that's still going over HTTP without really trying too hard to avoid HTTP. If you do have any other insight, any sort of common sources of HTTP that you're seeing in your network, uh, let me know. And would be interesting in hearing what other peoples are seeing in their network. But overall, it looks like the HTTPS Everywhere uh, initiative that was started, well, uh, almost uh, 13 years ago or so, I think, was successful and has led to essentially eliminating HTTP. And we got uh, one more on ability that really sticks out today and needs attention. And uh, this is uh, two vulnerabilities actually that Broadcom fixed in VMware vCenter. The first one is a uh, heap overflow vulnerability exploit code has been shared with uh, Broadcom. It's a vulnerability that was found during one of those Chinese uh, matrix cups, which is basically the Chinese version of a pwn to own contest. It's not very complex according to the description. So given the history of exploits against vCenter, this is certainly something uh, you need to address. The second vulnerability then is a privilege escalation vulnerability, which of course could easily then be uh, combined with the heap overflow in order to get full system control. Patches have been made available, and but the first thing you should do is make sure that you are not exposing vCenter to the internet. They have had a uh, couple of similar vulnerabilities that were eventually exploited just this year. Let's take a look at some of the other vulnerabilities that we have to talk about today. One in the Unify Network application. Unify Network is used to control various Unify devices. And one of the selling points is that you can run this Unify Network application on premise. Well, there is a privilege escalation vulnerability that has been addressed. An update is available. I would recommend that you do enable some kind of auto update for these Unify applications. It tends to be relatively stable and easy uh, to configure. Unrelated to this vulnerability, but still something you want to occasionally test if you are using Unify devices, make sure that they no longer accept logins with the default credentials that are still being set from the factory to UBNT and UBNT for username and password. Then we have yet another exploit example for a cross-site scripting vulnerability in a webmail system. This time it's a Roundcube's mail server. And Positive Security did write up an attack that they observed in the wild back in September, but the attack itself apparently at least started or was initiated back in June. The vulnerability here was also uh, patched early this year. I believe May is when the patch was released for this vulnerability. But a reminder, these webmail systems are being attacked and cross-site scripting in a webmail system, first of all, is hard to prevent. And secondly, is almost always a serious vulnerability because it does allow access to the content of the email and often to credentials. And finally, we got uh, vulnerabilities that affect your software supply chain. First, Atlassian uh, did uh, fix a number of vulnerabilities across various uh, products, particular pay attention uh, to the Confluence uh, data center and uh, server. Again, some uh, stored cross-site scripting vulnerabilities here. The REST stack-based overflows and such in Jira service management, data center and server. Some of these systems really, again, should not be exposed to the world.
And then we have patches for OneDev, uh, DevOps a platform. The most critical vulnerability here has a CSS score of 8.7 and does allow the unauthenticated reading of arbitrary files, which of course in a DevOps environment often does include credentials and at least some other confidential data like source code. Well, and this is it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.